All right, you guys watch uh, Slammiversary last night? I did. And it was a uh, it's a pretty good show, especially as we got going on the program. Uh, Ultimate X match. Josh Alexander beat Ace Austin, Chris Bay, Petey Williams, Rohit Raju, and Trey Miguel. If the match went 15 minutes, I would say the first eight minutes was not good. They had a million ideas, and uh, 999,999 went wrong. And then the second half of the match... They had another million ideas, and uh, 999,999 of them went right, including Canadian destroyers off a dude's shoulders when hanging from the top of the rig, all sorts of craziness. And uh, Josh Alexander ended up winning, so uh, still the X Division champion. Matt Cardona's mystery partner ended up being Chelsea Green with her arm in a cast, although they said she was cleared to wrestle, and they faced... Brian Myers and Tennille Dashwood, and Cardona and Chelsea Green won. Chelsea pinned Tennille. She actually did. A, there's a fourth Canadian destroyer on the show in the second match, and uh, she hit it with a, her arm in a cast on Tennille. Six minutes, and it's fine for what it was. W. Morrissey and Eddie Edwards, uh, former big cast, W. Morrissey, he won. And it was weird, as I mentioned on the Observer show last night, the thing in 2021, in the old days, if you just didn't do anything wrong, like everything was all right. But now there's like a level of, there, there are expectations in in professional wrestling nowadays. And just being tall and not doing anything wrong is not good enough. The match was designed to be a showcase for W. Morrissey. Eddie Edwards was in there to get the guy over, and then W. Morrissey was going to get a win. He took like 80% of the match. And he did nothing wrong, but I still could not possibly have cared less about him when the match was over. Which, in fact, means he did do something wrong. But he didn't. What he did wrong was he just didn't do anything wrong. You need to do more than that. And he didn't. So he won. I guess we're going to do something with the guy, but he needs to impress me. And in the words of Dusty Rhodes to Arn Anderson, not. kid, go get yourself over. You got to go get yourself over. Well, he Stand tried, but he failed. That's my point. Like, you got to oh, find yeah. a way to get yourself well, over, I mean, brother. Obviously he, well, how did he try to get himself over besides being tall? What did he do in the match well, he that did, made you? Like I said, he did nothing wrong. Like, he beat the guy up, and Eddie Edwards sold great, and he did moves and everything like that. But there was nothing There was nothing in it where when it was over, I was like, I cannot wait to see more of W. Morrissey. It was just He was just there, and not bad there. Like, sometimes you say someone's just there, and it's like they just didn't, it was useless. They didn't do anything. Morrissey did, but he was still just there. I can't explain it. If you watch it, you'll understand. Finn Juice returned, and they defeated Madman Fulton and Shearer in one minute. It was just basically a squash match. Chris Saban beat Moose. As I predicted, excellent match here. Chris Saban is great. This Moose is so good. If you guys only remember Moose from way back in the day, he's improved so much. His promos are great. His wrestling is really good. He's super athletic. Like, he was 50 times more impressive than W. Morrissey. And they're both tall with good physiques. But one guy, Moose, got himself over. The other guy did not get himself over. And Moose, by the way, lost via cradle here. So... They must have something planned for Chris Saban because otherwise, I don't know why you beat Moose here. We had the Good Brothers winning the tag team titles, beating Violent by Design, and Rich Swan and Willie Mack and Falaba. No way. The former No Way Jose. Now he's No Way. But they kept screwing up and calling him No Way Jose. But he's only supposed to be No Way. So it went 10 minutes, and the last two minutes, when everybody got in the ring, they hit all their big moves, bam, bam, bam. That was really good. Prior to that, it was, like, astonishingly not exciting with all those teams in there because it was mostly getting heat on Rich Swan, including in a four-team match laying on the mat in a headlock to get heat on Rich Swan. <laughs> I was flabbergasted. Deanna Parazzo beat Thunder Rosa 10 minutes. Very good match. Uh, Deanna Parazzo's good. Actually, very good. Thunder Rose is great. And uh, eh, they're both great. I don't want to get in trouble here. It was a very, very good match. Deanna Parazzo won, and afterwards they shot an angle with Mickey James. So uh, they'll be doing a match at some point down the road, and Deanna Parazzo is going to be on the uh, uh, women's show that uh, Mickey James is setting up. 
And finally, the main event, Kenny Omega, Sammy Callahan, no DQ match. They delivered as advertised. Pizza cutters to the head. Forks to the head. Double juice. Pile drivers through tables. One-winged angels onto thumbtacks. And, and V-triggers with tacks in your knee pad. It was a very violent match. 27 minutes and 45 seconds. Excellent main event. Kenny Omega retains the title. And uh, that was a good way. And... and the way that it went off the air was not good. The match was very good. But uh, Finn Juice ran in, but they went off the air before they got through the entrance ramp or the entrance way. So it, it came off like a botch, but it was on purpose. That was the only downside to the show, really. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.